Good morning. You listen to FlorDaily.net, and I'm Kim Parr. This morning, my guest is Gary Sissel, who's the president at Mill Creek Flooring. Gary, how you doing? I'm doing great, Kim. How are you this morning? I'm well. I wanted to ask you what was going on in the middle of the U.S. when it comes to flooring sales at retail. Before we get to that, let me remind my listeners a little bit about your background. You spent a long time as the head of flooring at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Prior to that, you were a French pro basketball player. And after Nebraska Furniture March, you went to Bob's Carpet and Flooring on the west coast of Florida and spent a few years there. Now you're the head of Mill Creek. You have 16 stores, right? Yes, we have 16 currently. I guess the first question to ask, are you missing the west coast of Florida? I know you were loving being down there for a while. You know, Kemp, that's a great question. The west coast of Florida is absolutely beautiful. And, you know, Tulsa has wide fluctuations in the weather. But, yeah, I guess... Long answer short, I do miss the West Coast. I miss being around the water. However, we have about seven lakes around here, so if I need to get my fix and get close to the water, I can drive to a lake that's nearby. So it's been a transition. So let's talk about what's going on at Mill Creek. You were telling me recently that you're having some pretty good sales. So tell us a little bit about what's going on there. Well, rewind a little bit. The first quarter was a little soft. We had some wild fluctuations in sales. We were up and down. But the second quarter is what concerned me a little bit more when energy prices started to dip. And then, of course, we had the monsoon season. The whole month of May and part of June, we've had rain just about every day and a substantial rain, a lot of flooding and whatnot, and that impacted the business a little bit. I think we've got a lot of pent-up demand right now, and, and we've been tapping on, on that with some very – promising sales and seeing some very good spikes in business. That's good. So you actually are having one of the strongest Junes that you've had in the history of the company, right? Yeah, this has been a phenomenal June. I think uh, builder sales has helped contribute to that a little bit, but our our retail business, like I said, I I believe from what I've seen, there's been some pent-up demand and Apparently, we've hit the, hit on the right note because it's driving a lot of customers into the store currently. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the total pie of business, and I should point out that, you know, we do a top 100 list of the top retailers, and you're just under the 50 mark. And I think the last time we talked, you said you, this year you're planning to be above the 50 mark. And so you've got sales somewhere in the in the mid-30 million mark. So it's definitely a sizable business. That's our estimate. You know, let's talk about the total business. If you, if you sliced it up, how much of it is the residential replacement, would you think? A little bit more than 50%. We're probably 55, 45. Mm-hmm. Uh, residential builder yeah. and plan on increasing that residential portion of that just slightly to keep that that in balance. I don't want to get more than you know fifty five forty five. I think it's a good mix. Sixty forty would be even better. Yeah. Okay. So, w- what's the consumer coming in and buying? I mean, talk about the mix between carpet and hard surface and some little details there, if you would. Surprisingly enough, when I looked it up the other day, it's actually like fifty three forty seven carpet to hard surfaces. That I was a little bit shocked given the amount of tile and wood that we sell on a daily basis. That's interesting because, you know, we, we're working on the July issue right now, and it's got our retail survey in it, and we're finding out, you know, a lot of your old friends, uh, you know, you were president of the NFA, a lot of your old friends are reporting to us that their business is below 50, in some instances below 40% carpet. So I guess in the Midwest they're still buying plenty of carpet. Well, I think fortunately or unfortunately, we have cold spells, and I think people like to, you know, when they get out of bed in the morning, like to have their feet in something a little warmer, a little more plush. I, I was a little bit surprised when I looked up the numbers, 5347. That's currently, and of course, that I'm sure will will shift back and forth over time. Yeah, well, you, you're good for Mill Creek because I'm going to tell you, most people know when you sell carpet, you actually make a little bit more money than you do in hard surface. So it's a good money maker, right? Yeah, carpet makes some good margin, and fortunately, most of our customers, when I look, when I look at our statistics, are, are continuing to upgrade, which is great, you know, moving away from some of the base grade stuff, which everybody knows. You make less margin, uh-huh. and we're continuing to drive our sales staff to show our customers the widest selection of really great products. Well, good for you, Gary, because I'll tell you, you know, this industry sometimes races to the bottom, and it's nice to present to the consumer a product that's going to last for a while, don't you think? I think that's the key point. I mean, when you think about it, you can give them a 25-ounce piece of carpet, and, and everybody knows that that's got a limited lifetime. And we try to stress that to the customer through our sales associates that spend a little bit more up front, it increases your investment so the, the lifetime cost is actually less. So we've been focusing on that quite a bit. You know, I did a, a best practices uh, spotlight on 
Grigsby's, which is right there in Tulsa as well, and a friend of yours, Penny Carnino, and she pointed out that she does a really good business with rugs. Do you sell many rugs? We don't. Penny's a fabulous marketing person, marketing mind, and a great merchandise. Her store is absolutely beautiful. She has a great rug selection, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we have not gotten into the rug business in any big way. We do a lot of custom rugs, which has been, been I think, pretty much our niche. We do a very good job with that, but as far as a, a massive rug display, I have to tip my hat to her. She, she does a great job with that. Yeah. Well, what do you feel like is going to happen in the second half of this year? you think it's going to continue to be like you had this June, continue to be good record numbers? I think if the price of energy continues to escalate up just a little bit, particularly being in the energy belt here, I think we're going to see a very good second half. Our builder business, there's a lot of empty lots waiting for concrete. Yeah. And I think the next quarter is going to be very, very good. So you've been there, what about, have you been there a year yet, Gary? Not quite a year, Kemp. Yeah. And what, what changes have you made that have made the big, biggest impact, do you think? Well, just trying to communicate with the flooring team on all levels every day. Trying to get a little closer to our customer, trying a few different kinds of advertising promotions to drive customers into the store. And then, of course, focusing on training. You and I have talked about training mm-hmm. many times, how important it is, and we are Spending a lot of resources focusing on training staff at all levels. All right, Gary. Well, congratulations on a tr- fantastic June. Good to catch up with you. Again, we're talking to Gary Sissel, who's the president of Mill Creek Flooring, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.